really upset with what's going on in Wisconsin and want to be here in solidarity with the workers there. We went through a similar uh, situation with our own provincial government that uh, ripped up our contract and um, 2004, I think? Uh, it was, it was, yeah, I believe yeah. it was 2004. Welcome to Solidarity Rally at Peace Arch Park. You are a great looking crowd. And on behalf of the Northwest Washington Central Labor Council, I bid you welcome. Gathering here today, we are continuing a long tradition of Canadians and Americans coming together in the shadow of the beautiful Peace Arch, coming together to take a stand for social justice and civil rights. Brothers and sisters, this is a defining moment for the labor movement. We got a, a war zone, we got to reach deep down into our rank and file and get them out here with us in the days and weeks and months to follow. Corporate North America and bankers and their political allies have declared a war on working families, they've declared a war on unions, they've declared a war on poor and vulnerable people. What they want to destroy is the most precious thing the labor movement has. That precious thing is our solidarity with each other as human beings and working people. That's what this is about. Those folks in power hate that solidarity. They don't like us. They don't like working people, but they really hate it when we have power because we have solidarity. And that's what this is about. We've got a message for them. Even though it's not our country, that you better be careful. The EFL-CIO is a very strong organization. And while I'm at it, and while I'm at it, I've got a message for our governments up there in Canada that you better not even think about it, not even for a minute, what they're doing in the United States. Not for a minute. Today in solidarity, holding hands across this border and extending our unity and our strength and our movement worldwide. And we are so proud because we stand here in solidarity with the people of Wisconsin. The people of Wisconsin. Thank you. One of the deeds I've been tasked with today was to uh, try to explain to you what's been going on in Madison and uh, just what it was really like. You guys don't need any help. This is what's been going on in Madison for the last month. Thank you very much from Wisconsin. This is indeed a very great opportunity for me. Um, there's, I know there's been rallies all over the country and this is the first one I've been able to go to out of the state. You know, I can't tell you how important these are. Uh, to the brothers and sisters in the state of Wisconsin. The resolve we have in Wisconsin is driven by the knowledge that we are not alone in this battle. We're only the first. We have the will to continue this fight for as long as it takes. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your solidarity, your support, and your resolve. We will not be denied victory. The labor movement in the great countries of the United States and Canada will not allow this anti-union, anti-middle class, anti-people movement to sustain. Solidarity to y'all. Thank you. I have to tell you, this is, uh, this is pretty awesome. It's good that we have Canada here in the state. It's good when warriors such as ourselves meet in the struggle of life and death. And this is what it is. If I look out in the audience, I see the best of the working class. To me, it seems like the universe is out of sync. Have you noticed this year we've had two earthquakes, one in New Zealand, one in Japan. It started with the revolt in Egypt in the desert. It went to Wisconsin, Syria, Libya, Ohio, Indiana, Canada, and Washington State. And it's continuing. Because you know what? The capitalists and the powers to be have declared a holocaust on the working class. This is a holocaust on us as Americans and Canadians and as a working class. Even Henry Ford, the great automaker, understood that you have to pay workers a decent wage and treat them with dignity and respect and pay them a good wage to buy the automobiles that he sells. 
And with the struggle that happened in Wisconsin, I don't blame them for fighting, because we have to fight. When we take the easy path, no. we always lose, my brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. We will always Keep lose. In 1981, when the air traffic controllers went on strike, we took the easy path. And if you talk to labor leaders today like Willie Adams, they'll tell you that we embolden the corporations to go after workers and the unions that represent them, and we have the density in this country. Think about what this country would look like if we would have stood up then like we're standing up today. Your trade, trade agreements would be different. Healthcare would be different. Taxation would be different. My brothers and sisters, think about this recession. Would we be cutting money to create jobs if we had the density we had in 1981? No, we wouldn't. But we're awake right now, aren't we? Yeah. And all of a sudden, right it's cool to be union. Yeah. Let me hear it. We are union. We are one. We are union. We are one. My brothers and sisters, right now, the path's in front of us. Now, you can take that path to the right. It's all downhill and it's paved. Hey. And in hey. the summer, it's shady. Hey. And it's a nice, leisurely downhill path. And, and you know what? That's the path they took in 1981. <laughs> yeah. Well, my brothers and sisters, you can take the higher road to the left. It's dirty. It's a dirty. rutted road. Yeah, it's a dirt road, my brothers and sisters. But let me tell you, you walk up that road, and you'll find the footprints of Rosa Parks. You'll, you'll be walking the steps of Dr. King. That's right. My brothers and sisters, I tell you, if you take that path, if you take that path, you'll be treading the path that 75 years ago your grandparents and great-grandparents took. Where they faced down bullets, they faced down clubs, that some of them, they all fought and some of them died. But they created the middle class. They made our lives better. You know, you know something? If you want to feed your kids and have them educated, or if you want a workplace that's safe, Safe, and safe. folks get a good job. Safety first. And they have pensions and health care. And if you want a planet, if you want a planet with an environment you'll be proud to pass on to next, the next generation, you'll take that high road. You will take that high road. My brothers and sisters, are you ready for the fight?